to the Doctor Who Marathon. I'm your host, Mickey Dam, and today we're going to be talking about the K9 episode, Alien Avatar, written by Graham Farmer, which would be his only script in which he wrote by himself for the series, and is directed by Carl Swiggy. Uh, this story is essentially a PSA, as it, as it talks about um, pollution and how it affects our rivers and how it affects... Um, the world at large or at least that's what it's trying uh to say that's what it's trying to tell because with K with this series being <laughs> as great of quality that it has been so far um it's not always that simple i don't want to keep bumming this story down but uh, this series down but it's really hard to struggle to find some really great entertainment here and the, the episode just feels very mundane and very, um, very a basic um, pollution style story, but has not one ounce of the intrigue and also has no ounce of the political um, establishing and payoff that stories like this usually turn out. Despite stories like this being good or bad, usually they do feel like they're telling their audiences uh, something. However, the story feels like like this pollution aspect of the story is just completely coincidental. Um, it's very strange, it's very odd, and I don't know. It just feels really odd. So, the story starts off with um, Starkey and K9 actually go in uh, fishing and seemingly uh, fishing isn't a criminal activity according to the department as we get some of these robocops here and uh, K9 and Starkey are talking as they're talking about the concept of fishing and they plan to go fishing and despite the robot characters that being K9 and these two cops um, seemingly have no interest in fishing and um, are very like confused by the concept they don't charge Starkey with it it is kind of strange because you know you would thought that the department which is very hands-on and very trying to control the public would have some sort of issue with uh, the public trying to catch fish which could be used as a marketplace um, for a particular food fishing um so yeah that's really odd in my opinion and when can but uh, when starkey and canine get to where they plan the fish the the fish seem to be all over the all over the beach uh completely dead covered in a very dangerous substance which uh, starkey picks up with his um with his net and accidentally bumps into K9 with it and throughout the story, K9 um, seems to be suffering from some sort of electrical damage. Now, this little aspect of the story, I'm kind of 50-50 on. In terms of the plot, it really does nothing. Like, the whole K9 being injured through this entire story doesn't play into it at all. Like, it, I don't even think it's like, properly mentioned. Um... Um, after a while it's very strange it's very odd it's just sort of like a detail in the story however in terms of a prosthetic um, it means that K9 um, has this much more unstable look to him uh, and the prop itself when they use the prop it starts to like shake a lot its head moves very loosely compared to what it usually um, appears as and I feel like it gives the K9 uh, this variant of K9 a lot more uh, personality. We also learn here that K9, um, who throughout this series has been using a lot of Earth slang um, and very un K9 y um, dialogue, for example, at one point he says uh, rock and roll. Um, we learn that this is because K9's uh, data banks in this period of his, of his life. 
um, has been updated to include over 500 movies. And so um, he basically has um, a movie uh, vocabulary, which um, I don't know. I, d I don't know if I like that explanation or not. Rather than him just like learning and experiences, it is part of his computer data bank systems. Um, in some way, it does give this canine a very unique um, character trait and does kind of make him a much more interesting uh, protagonist in terms of him stepping up to try and be the main lead of the series. However, K9 is still not the main lead of the series. It's mainly Starkey and Professor Griffiths. Um, there's also a really strange scene earlier on in the episode which just baggles my brain. Every time I watch it, I'm just like, I, I did actually like have to repeat it because I was just like, am I supposed to pick up something? Is this something... Like, is the character supposed to be acting uh, out of character? Is this something like an uh, alien has infected their minds? St um, Georgie seems to be hiding out in the house of Griffiths, uh, where she's listening to music, and she's listening to it really loud um, on her headphones, and she's singing it out loud, which is distracting everyone. Whereas Darius is trying to sneakily take some books away, and... and Georgie basically keeps bumping into him, dancing at him, to the point where he actually drops his books. And when Griffiths notices this, uh, Darius is is just very um, very suspicious about it and acting very odd and spiteful. And the professor's just like, "Last time I seen you read a book, you you uh, last time I seen you hold it as a hold a book, you used it as a cricket bat." Um, uh, uh, and we later learn that he was trying to sell the book, so Griffiths makes him um, put them back in the library, which then begs the question, why would he take it through the corridor? He could have just hid it in his, in, his in his garage with his car if he wanted to sneak out books. Like, he just gave himself away, essentially. And the whole thing with Georgie listening to... Uh, music very loudly is apparently supposed to be a normal thing for her character which just goes to show how lacking these characters are in it's been established in the series we uh, we learn um, that she isn't supposed to be there um, she tells Professor Griffiths that you know she's got some days off and she's um, she's got some time off from all of her studying from her ballet her and all of her other stuff, but we soon learn that uh, she actually lied to try and hide away from her mother and have some nice fun adventures with K9 and company. Uh, K9 and company. And so uh, they all then uh, gather around and are trying to learn out um, what is happening to these fish, uh, these strange, uh, this strange substance which is killing all the fish. And whilst Darius is going to take out some books, uh, put the books back, he actually uh, gets appearance by these two um, creatures in astral projection form, the Mendes, um, an alien race which were captured um, earlier on by um, Drake and his crew, and they have the ability to um, psychoproject, and they have a ship which has a device which can actually dematerialise um, reappear their, their spacecraft. So uh, Drake really wants to harness that technology and we learned that um, by trying to recreate their dematerializing technology they need a particular dangerous substance which has a very highly corrosive um, um, waste and that's what's killing the fish. And so um, canine goes under um goes back to the beach and goes under through the the catacombs to try and find out the source of this material as georgie and and darius on the surface try to follow him from uh, follow him from the top as georgina's mother is getting really suspicious of drake and goes to griffiths for help only for 
Griffiths to basically reveal what's happening as K9 gets in danger as his signal starts uh, being interfered by the the fumes that have been um, that are in the way of the in the tunnels. Now let's talk about tunnels because it's the exact same set as the basement of the house. It's every single sewer. And it's also the same set used for the for the prison, uh, the alien prison of of the department. It's so obvious. There's n it's so clearly the same set. That it's but it's so it's so disappointing because you could have had a very unique uh, sewers in this scene and it could have something a bit more claustrophobic, a bit more uh, muddy, a bit more um, you know disgusting in in a natural sense. But no, we have the exact same set, and it's really and it's so obvious, and it makes the the series look more cheap than probably it. Um, it does. And so we have a scene then in which um, there's this really strange bit in which um, Georgie and Darius get captured by the Robocops when they enter a facility that's not supposed to be in, in which they learn about the device being created by uh, Drake's men. And we get a scene which actually kind of feels like a great cliffhanger this would be a great cliffhanger if this was a two-parter in which a character is getting captured um starkey goes running off and so does george's georgia's mother and and professor griffith seems to like he wants to follow however his um astrophobia his phobia of of large in large spaces gets the better of him and he goes back running in his house and closes the door um seemingly taking him out of the action and that seems like a really fun interesting cliffhanger right however after K9 um, uh, has some communication with the, uh, the Mendez uh, he finds himself up in the factory he helps save uh, Georgie and Darius um, and they escape and they chase them but before they can chase them then they get to the fence the uh, Georgie's mother comes in, and because she's a high authority in the department, she just tells everybody to let them go, and to stop work. And that's the literally, that's the solution of the episode. Georgie's mother just comes in, so like, okay, let my daughter and her son and her friends go, and uh, stop what you're doing, and we'll be, uh, and we're fine. And she also helps. Um, free the aliens that Drake was um, imprisoning um, through the series, uh, through the story, I mean. And says, you know, they can, they go on their way. But before they leave, um, they want to do something for Earth as they go to the beach and they actually use their powers to kind of absorb all the pollution that has been spilt into the, into the lake and also heal K9 by the end of the episode. That's it! That's the plot of the episode. That's what you're doing with the, the pollution story. You have the ending with the the aliens just like, oh no no no, we'll 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 clean this up for you. There you go, done. That's how pollution is sorted. What the hell is up with this series? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to blame Graham Farmer. I don't think. I think. A lot of people might be like, oh, these are terrible writers and terrible directors. But I think there is a lot to consider, like timing and budgetary reasons and and just um, communication and how everything was sorted by the production team and the producers um, on top. So, you know, breaking TV is hard. And I think this is a clear example of when the difficulties are uh, over the heads of the creative people involved. We also get a few teasers for future events with, um, uh, what's his name, Lomax, the, the leader of the department, gets mentioned at some point. Um, 
Georgina's mother believes that when Drake wants this dematerialization uh, technology, he can use it to basically go wherever he wants and uh, stop any um, public crimes that he deems worthy um, uh, behind uh, the law max's back. So basically he would have free jurisdiction as nothing would really stop him with this dematerialising te uh, technology. Um, so that's kind of like a teaser for a future event. And that's Alien Avatar. Overall, it's a really forgettable episode. This is probably one of the most weaker episodes of the series. And that is saying something. That is saying something. It's just... It just feels very mundane. And the, fight, the fact that this story does seem to have built up a great little story and a great little um, narrative and a great little um, message about pollution and stuff. The story just seems to want to be like, hey kids, pollution! And hope that the audience would um, would take the feeling that, you know, this could be important. Um, oh, this feels like an important special episode that, that means a lot. It's trying too hard to be like a third Doctor story like uh, The Green Death or Inferno, where it's got this political message in um, about, like, you know, our environment. But this story does nothing to really justify it or tell it in an interesting way. And also is kind of dull as the ending is just that the the aliens cure the, the the pollution and that's it it's it's a really uneventful uh, episode and it is easily one of the weak episodes of the k9 series so anyway that's alien avatar so join me next time when the doctor and amy will be meeting ninjas so join me next time for the Jarad pyramid and I'll see you next time on the Doctor Who Marathon. Ta-da!